welcome to another episode of the Linux Guy. Today I'm going to talk about the terminal, specifically a terminal emulator in Linux, and basically just some things that you can use it for to do everyday tasks. Now I'm going to have a file browser open here also, where I can make parallels with the terminal. I'm going to go ahead and do it in here to show you what's going on. But I won't be able to do it for everything because some things the terminal just can do better. So, I guess I'll go ahead and open up a terminal here. If you've not seen this little window before, well, this is sort of what this is about, so I assume you've seen it at least once before. But I'll make it bigger. You can make it bigger on a Linux machine by holding Control and hitting the plus sign, so you'll probably, for most keyboards, need to also hold Shift to make it bigger. And then Control minus to make it smaller. And this should give you a, a pretty good idea of what I'm doing. You should be able to see it a little bit better. So. Here we are. What is this? It's a flashing thing. On Ubuntu, you're probably at least familiar with how to do this to run updates. So I'll do that. And some of you might even be familiar with running upgrades in this in a similar fashion. So sudo apt upgrade instead of update. I'm running the security updates real quick, but uh, but you could run this or even this and get upgrades for all of your software. Most of you are probably familiar with that. If you're not, that's how you update from the command line. It's a useful thing to do. The next command, another super important one, clear. This is just a navigational command that makes it easier to see what you're doing. Here's another one, enter. You can just leave uh, blank spaces or execute your code with pressing enter. Now, any of you that have ever opened a terminal are probably familiar with that, but I wanted to go through the bare basics for someone who's completely lost. What is this? Well, let me talk about it a little bit. So, this is my username right here, and I am at this computer right now, which happens to be the host name of the computer that I'm recording this on. And this little tilde right here tells me that I'm in the, my home folder, and this dollar sign tells me that I'm a standard user as opposed to a root user, and I'll get into root users in a minute. What can I do right here? Well. How about I list what's in my directory? So, this is everything that's located in my home directory, and I'm in my home directory because that tilde is there. That's a symbol for your home directory, basically. And you'll see that it actually parallels everything here. So, this ls command lists everything in my directory, and it's similar to opening up a file browser, and you can see everything here. Now, you may be wondering, Okay, great. Why on earth would I want to do that when I have this nice, easy, I can just click it stuff? Well, in many instances, exactly. Why would you? I have a file browser and I use it a lot. It's not necessarily the best tool for everything, though. So, what if I told you that this terminal is actually capable of writing programs? I'll write one. There it goes. There's my program. So it's got a basic programming language called Bash. This is a Bash shell. Now there's other kinds of shells, and all over the internet you'll say use Fish, use blah 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 blah. They're better. I always stick with Bash mostly because then when I touch someone else's computer I know what I'm doing. But there are alternatives to Bash, but I'm going to teach you Bash. What's something you can do in the Bash shell that you can't do in the file browser? Well there's this. By hitting W and typing Enter you can see who's logged in and how long they've been logged in can also see the uptime of the computer. See, mine hasn't been up for very long. If you just want the uptime of the computer, it's actually pretty intuitive. You can just type uptime, and there it is. Those are some things that you can't do in a file browser. Here's another one. And this is sort of true. You can find this out here, because some file browsers will have it listed at the top. This one is called Nautilus, and it does not. So, pwd tells me my working directory, where, am, where I am right now. So now, I'm in the root directory. And now I'm back in my home folder, so I'm back here. Now you see I issued a few other commands, let's talk about those next. So this is called the cd command, and is the change directory command. And what it does is it changes your directory. So I've got a folder here called tests. If I double click it in my file browser, it takes me into that folder. And if I click over here or up at the top and click to go home, I go back to my home. Well, I can do that here as well. CD test. And I go there, and if I hit ls, I can see what's there. There's that test.txt. Now there's two ways to get home. 
I can do this, which goes back to the previous directory, which happens to be home. So there I, there I went back home. Or if I go back into test and I just type CD, CD by itself, if you're not in your home directory, will always take you home. So here we are back home. Now I want to show you some shorthands. So this is root. What is root? Root is basically where all of your system stuff is. Your stuff is going to be located in this home folder followed by your username. But there's all sorts of stuff, Linux, in here, like the binaries from your computer, Etsy for etc. This is a whole bunch of stuff is stored in there. Media, if you mount a drive, it goes here, or sometimes some distributions put it in MNT. We have temp, which is for temporary files that when you restart your computer or clear your cache, this folder will be deleted. So this is basically, if you're a Windows user, this is, a, this is your System32 folder. This is where all of the stuff is. But on a Linux machine, it's located at the first directory called root. And I know I'm in root, because I can see that guy right there. Or I can do pwd, and this will show where I am. Now, this is shorthand for home. So you see the tilde, and this says everything in tilde. So this basically takes you home. Now, for change directory, cd, this is sort of pointless, because you can just type cd and then that. However, for other commands, maybe I wanted to execute something in my home folder. Now, instead of having to type the full path, I can just type the tilde and then this stuff. It's a, it's a, it's a shorthand thing. You'll see this a lot, especially on online forums. And the reason I bring it up is that reason. If you're trying to find out something about your computer and you see a command with that, you may wonder what it is. Well, that's what it is. The next thing I'm going to talk about are flags, and flags are basically attachments to commands that you can issue that help you see more. So if I hit ls, we know what this command does now. This lists everything in our directory. What if I did ls-a? This is actually going to show everything. So in Linux, hidden folders are hidden by putting a dot in front of the file name. Now, you see them all here, and you don't see them all here. Well, it turns out this can do this too. So on a Linux machine with Nautilus anyway, maybe it's different with different file managers, but I'm using Nautilus. I can hit Control H while holding it, and you see, here's all those hidden files and folders. Hit Control H again, and they go away. So you can see there's some similarities here between the two. This, however, is far more efficient at a few other things. So what if I do ls-l? Now this gives me a whole lot of information about everything in here. It tells me the permissions. I'm gonna talk about permissions in a minute. It tells me the owner and the group that this belongs to tells me last modified date and then there's the folder name over there. This is a particularly useful thing because well especially this tells you what files where can do what. Let me give you an example. Let's go into that test folder. In here I have this test.txt file. That's cool. I can edit a text file and I could go in here and open it and edit it. We're going to write a small program and we're going to explain why that ls-l command is so useful. And we're going to do it by writing a small program. Well, .txt is not an extension for a program. It would be a good time now to show you a new command, the mv command. Now you might know you can cut and paste or copy and paste files. You can copy with cp for copy or you can move them with mv for move. I could move it like this. You see it actually disappeared from my file browser and now it's in my home folder. I could also copy it. So you'll notice here that since I'm in this folder right now and it does show me, I don't have to type the path. I only have to type the path if it's somewhere else. So this will work. It will stay here because I copied it, but we'll have a new one in here. So that's how you use the MV and the CP command. However, the MV command is a little bit more than it might appear because the MV command is also how we change the name and file extension of stuff from the command line. So if we have test.txt and we move it to test.sh, now there's just test.sh and I've even changed the file extension. So this is now a bash script.